Hey YouTube family, bulls and bears, thank you for joining me here. It is Tuesday, January 11th, 2022. We've got financial news, economic news coming out fast and furious. So thank you for joining me. If you like our updates, please hit the like button and subscribe button. I'll have a lot of people here, about half my viewers come back just about every video but are not subscribed. So please, if you like these updates, if you like this channel, if you want to keep this channel alive, please hit that subscribe button so we can stay alive and keep bringing you this up, up nearly daily updates. Not always on weekends. Sometimes I'll take a day off, but we're at least five, six, seven days a week here in most cases. Uh, today, we have a lot of news here. We like to cover the housing market. We're going to talk about the quote unquote housing bubble. Well, I say quote unquote because some people are saying that there is no housing bubble. And now some people are saying there was never a housing bubble, even back in 2008. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the markets, uh, the uh, the money creators, uh, the rising cost of living, uh, the, the markets, you name it. Let's talk about it. Let's get into this first article right here. Let's start right here. This one's out of Bloomberg. Bank of America is dropping the NSF charges. That's the non-sufficient funds charge. And they're reducing the overdraft fee from $35 down to $10. Hip, hip, hooray, right? A lot of people are saying I never have good news. Well, here's some good news. If you're someone that likes to overdraft, I shouldn't say like. If you're someone that uh, happens to overdraft your checking account, uh, this could be good news for you. Now, what most banks have been doing for many, many years, decades, is charging you if you go over your checking account balance or if you go in the negative, they'll charge you an overdraft fee, non-sufficient funds fee, sometimes multiple ones. Sometimes you can get a fee for each transaction. For example, you buy a stick of a pack of bubble gum for uh, whatever, 50 cents, and you get a transaction fee that might be 20 times higher than the dollar or two charge that you charged uh, that put your account in negative. So pretty crazy. But in a time where banks can borrow money from the money creators, borrow money at 0% and then loan it out at 25%, if you're talking about credit cards, sometimes even higher, uh, in, a, in a environment where banks can do that, do they really need overdraft fees? Well, they're still keeping uh, some of the fees on there, but Bank of America is cutting back that uh, overdraft fee and eliminating the NSF fee. And um, it's likely that bank profits will continue to skyrocket even without these fees. Why? Because again, we have negative interest rates in the real world. That means institutions can borrow money, can get liquefied at a no risk whatsoever, nearly 0% rates. And they can continue to make loans uh, with that money with interest attached. So it's a win-win situation. Uh, they cannot lose. Uh, the only thing that would make them lose in this case would be a change in laws or regulations or tightening the lending standards against the banks. Uh, considering the lawmakers' um, history, I don't think that's ever going to happen. I think it's going to be looser and looser lending requirements, too big to fail, um, endless support for the banks. I don't see this changing anytime soon. And uh, essentially, that's what's required to keep this economic illusion going. The economy is sustained via lending and people taking on larger and larger amounts of debt. If you hold the banks to certain limitations, if and when the banks ever get tightened or the regulations uh, get more restrictive, uh, that's when you'll see the house of cards begin to come down, uh, begin to crumble. Uh, because this entire uh, what we call economic growth GDP is dependent on never ending amounts of debt, lending, spending, borrowing, uh, etc. I think most of you got the picture on that. Next recent article, three Fed rate hikes won't be enough to combat inflation, says former White House economist Tyler Goodspeed argues the Fed is behind the curve. And he's right, but... The money creators have been behind the curve for several years. That's what we've been talking about here. And no, these little rate hikes are not going to make much of a difference. They may scare investors temporarily, but I think when these people, when these investors, when these institutions, hedge funds, when they see how fractional these rate increases are going to be, if they do the rate increases, 
I think you're still going to see uh, the dips bought uh, higher, to higher and higher levels. And uh, we saw the last round of rate increases 2018 into 2019. They were a fraction of a percent. We're talking 0.25% rate increases. But with the debt levels, that would still cause a lot of fear to enter the markets. Uh, but again, these tiny rate hikes are not going to do anything. To really make a difference, they'd have to do bigger rate hikes to, to match the, the cost uh, of the rising prices, to match inflation. But of course, they won't do that. Uh, when rents are going up 15 20% in some cities uh, per year, uh, you need much, much bigger um, rate hikes in order to offset uh, that type of runaway uh, prices. Uh, so of course, the money creators are behind the eight ball or behind the curve, so to speak. Uh, nothing new, but it is nice to see an authoritative news source um, putting that out there. All right, next article, let's talk about this. This one really kind of blew me away. What do you think about this? This one comes out of Bloomberg. There was no housing bubble in 2008, and there isn't one now. All right, now this is Bloomberg. This is just uh, one person's opinion, the person that wrote this article, but Bloomberg allowed this to be put on their platform. So when you talk about the housing bubble, well, you have to put quotations around it because if home prices go up more, then that means there wasn't the housing bubble, right? If the bubble just keeps getting bigger um, and now they're saying, looking at 2008, that was not a housing bubble either. Now it's interesting because coming out of 2008, 2010, 11, 12, looking back, everyone agreed that there was a housing bubble. But the only reason they agreed on it because the housing bubble was allowed to pop. It was allowed, the housing market was allowed to collapse. And I say that is because they didn't do the bailouts fast enough in order to keep enough debt in the system to allow people to keep buying these houses. Um, but actually the Fed is sort of in front as far as keeping the banks liquefied. So we're not gonna see the mortgage companies stop lending we're not going to see the banks stop lending we got the zero reserve requirement by the way if, if anyone is telling you about the economy or talking about the banks without mentioning the reserve requirement they are missing a big part of the puzzle so reserve requirement is huge right now the banks have a zero reserve requirement that's the lowest in the history of u.s banking and that again is huge that means banks can loan out money without having any money to back up any loan losses uh, but here's the thing they don't need it because they've been guaranteed endless bailouts from the money creators uh, so yeah so there's news to you there's no housing bubble now and there wasn't any housing bubble then uh, they can just keep on giving out more loans to help people buy these bubble priced homes and uh, if home prices double from here then people will look back and say okay this wasn't a bubble either um, and then they'll say, okay, now then it's a bubble because home prices doubled again, uh, but they could double again. So take a look at Venezuela, um, take a look at Zimbabwe. Uh, other countries are entering into hyperinflation or they're at the beginning stages of that type of inflation. Look at what's happening in Turkey. Uh, look at what's happening in Lebanon. Um, the US, we have the world reserve currency. So things here are inflating slower than some of these other countries that we've seen do similar uh, money creation. Um, but if you're not investing, if you're not aware of what's happening, you know it could get pretty painful for a lot of people here in the US with this rising price environment, rising cost of living, um, people buried under more debt. And uh, the haves and the have nots, the wealth gap or the wealth transfer as we like to call it here, is going to continue to get wider so continue to use caution everybody uh, thanks for being here for this report what do you think about the non-existent housing bubble uh, bank of america getting rid of some of those fees please let me know thanks for being here big love peace bye